This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. At least for me here in Chicago, it is a chilly day. It is 35 degrees. It was snowing this morning when walking the dog. Not a day when I want to be outside, but luckily for me, there is baseball on for the entire day for today. What I want to do is go through and kind of give you like a viewing guide for today by going through some bets I like through various start times at FanDuel Sportsbook. So if you're listening during the afternoon, hopefully get a couple of bets in there, uh, some stuff I like for tonight as well. So going to lay out the day, try to give you some rooting interests for today across Major League Baseball. If you are so enticed, we'll talk some baseball for today, then I'll talk F1 in Japan to close out the show later on as well. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Here to break down today's MLB betting slate, letting you know where I see value at FanDuel Sportsbook, talking some totals, a money line I like, and a prop that we could turn into a safe game parlay as well and of course like i said we'll talk f1 in japan later on but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast tomorrow dr ed feng will join us once again breaking down the men's and women's final fours for college basketball we're gonna talk about those uh four games coming up this weekend talk about whether there are championship futures at uh, at likes, we'll talk about all that to get his thoughts on the remain the remaining four teams for both the men and women. That is coming up tomorrow. You can get that by subscribing to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. Of course, we're talking MLB today. If you want MLB betting every day, you can check out the solo shot over on the FanDuel Research Podcast feed. I'm breaking down my top props every single weekday there, then talking DFS later on. Uh, The props I discussed in the solo shot, not going to have those in the show for today. want to keep the two shows independent, uh, talking more so money lines and totals on this show for the most part with the props over on the solo shot. So search for a FanDuel Research podcast to get that as it is posted each and every weekday. If your back bracket is busted in the men's and women's tournament, do not worry because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. You can bet on individual games, futures, etc., etc. Time to go dancing on America's number one sports book right now. New customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first five dollar bet wins. That's two hundred bucks used on point spreads, money lines, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Must be twenty one plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports. Sports wagering in Kansas under agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. Ten dollar first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash rg. Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, and Vermont. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1 888 789 7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 809 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700 for the KS Gambling Health.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 Stop in Louisiana, visit MD Gambling Health.org in Maryland, 1 800 Gambler.net in West Virginia, 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gambling helpline ma.org or Clay Hunter 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Let's take a look now at the MLB slate for today. Want to begin things off by talking about the afternoon games. A couple of bets I like there. Then we'll talk about the nightcap as well. Let you know where I'm seeing value for today over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The first bet I like for today is actually in this game right here. That is the Red Sox taking on the A's out in Oakland and uh, Red Sox favored minus 152 on the money line. The A's are a plus 128, not seeing a ton of value there personally, where I do see value is in the total for this game. As you can see over on Fangel TV Plus, that is at eight runs right now over is minus 104. And given the state of this A's bullpen, I'm having a really hard time not liking the over at that number. It really does come down to this A's bullpen. Their active roster bullpen has a 4.47 skill interactive ERA. 
since the start of last year, which is not the worst in baseball. The White Sox were actually worse than that, which made me very nervous last night as I had the under in that game and uh, the White Sox money line. But it's a really bad bullpen. And that means that teams can score runs the entire game, which is not always the case in Major League Baseball. We got some bullpens that can lock things down, keep the scores suppressed. That's not the case here. The A's game so far, there have been six of them, have featured eight or more runs in all but one. So pushing or better in all but one game. And given the way things set up, I think that's probably not super fluky just because, again, that bullpen is really bad. It's 58 degrees in Oakland for today, which is not perfect for offense. It is a, a slight downgrade there, but it's also typical Oakland weather. So it's a typical Oakland park factor. No upgrade, no downgrade. I think it's probably lower than it should be given how bad this bullpen is. I don't mind either starter here. It's Nick Pavetta taking on Roth Stripling. I was on Stripling strikeout over last week, and that did hit. Uh, Pavetta has been pitching really well ever since the Red Sox let him have kind of a more full leash last year. Looked really good in his first start this year, too. I just think this number is too low given the bullpen situation for the A's. So to me, over eight runs for the Red Sox and the A's, minus 104 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that's the proper way to go, just given how bad this A's bullpen is. That's the first one for me, is the A's and Red Sox over eight runs. That game begins at uh, 3.38, 3.37 p.m. Eastern. Just a bit after that is the Yankees and the Diamondbacks. And I think we can spin this game into a same-game parlay. And that does tie into a thought I had in the solo shot earlier on today. Uh, the strikeout prop that I liked was Merrill Kelly over five and a half strikeouts. That is still at minus 110 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And that's going to be the first leg here is Kelly over five and a half strikeouts. And the justification for that as laid out on the other show is that Kelly is pitching really well right now. Did down the stretch last year. Looked good in his first start this year. Came against the Rockies. Uh, so grain of salt there, obviously. But 79 pitches, six and two thirds innings, eight strikeouts. So super, super efficient there. And what he did that I liked a lot for Kelly was that he was leaning on his cutter, throwing fewer curveballs, and then he started towards the end of last year. It's now an 11 start sample and Kelly doing that and 28% strike area for him. He's had double digit strikeouts in a couple of those games. So upside is here for Kelly to hit five and a half strikeouts. He also does get a bump in terms of strikeouts at home, which is where he is for today, taking on the Yankees. So first leg is Kelly over five and a half strikeouts at minus 110. But I also show value individually on the Diamondbacks money line. Part of that is because those those numbers I was gushing about with Kelly before are going to translate to the money line model as well. Because obviously that's going to play into things for me. But when I look at this game in terms of the money line, my model has this as being basically a toss up if it were on a neutral field. And obviously the Arizona is at home. So when you put this game in Arizona, that's going to show a lot of value in the Diamondbacks win odds. And again, Kelly does tend to pitch better at home than he does on the road. If you pair the Arizona money line with the Kelly strikeout prop over five and a half at minus 110, the same game probably that is plus is plus 212. Obviously, that means that FanDuel knows these two bets are correlated. Because if you had these two uncorrelated, just paired them together, uh, it'd be closer to not three to one, but somewhere in that range. So FanDuel knows these two bets are correlated and you are being taxed for that. But I think that correlation is worth it because again, Liking Kelly plays into both his strikeout department and the money line. So if I assume that Kelly maintains the gains he has shown with his current pitch mix and pitches well, uh, pitches well at home, that's going to impact both of these. So because they play well together, I think it does set up well for a same game parlay. So what I'll do here is take the Kelly uh, over five and a half strikeouts and pair with the Arizona money line. That's plus 212 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that's a fair way to play things. And that's where I'm going to go for today personally. If you got some sort of offer out there for a no sweat same game parlay, need another leg or something, I'd be looking into the Arizona batters uh, facing off against Carlos Rodon. I'm not super enamored with him right now. So you could look at um, some uh, total base props and Christian Walker there would be pretty enticing. Uh, Walker to get. Uh, uh, two plus bases is plus 130. Really don't mind that. So if you want to toss it in for an extra leg or if you need three legs to get some sort of offer, I don't mind that. But for me personally, it's sticking with just the Kelly over five and a half strikeouts and the Arizona money line at plus 
or at minus 102. But Walker would be the first guy I'd turn to in terms of uh, total base if you need one more leg to toss into that one. So for the afternoon slate, uh, liking the Arizona money line minus 102 paired with the Kelly over five and a half strikeouts at minus 110 uh, for a same game parlay of plus 202. And then the Red Sox and A's over eight runs at FanDuel Sportsbook. As far as the night games go, biggest value for me is in a spot where I'm looking at it primarily just because of weather that is the Rockies and the Cubs at Wrigley field. And the total right now, is seven and a half runs is still at seven at a lot of other spots. So family giving us an extra half run here to take the under that is minus minus one twenty two. And I do think this is a good way to go for this one. And it all does come down to weather for me because again, right now in Chicago, it is going to be about 39 degrees at first pitch. It was snowing earlier on, might continue to snow throughout the day for today, and the wind is blowing in. For those of you who may be new to baseball, Wrigley Field is as sensitive to wind or more sensitive to wind to any other park in Major League Baseball. So when the wind is blowing in, that changes things pretty dramatically from a run total expectation. Obviously, it's a good matchup for the the Cubs uh, facing Cal Quantrill, facing that Rockies bullpen. Those are both situations that are going to be conducive towards a lot of runs. But to me, weather matters a lot, and the weather is obviously influencing this number already, but I think it should go a bit more, a bit further in dragging this total down. So under seven and a half runs is minus 122. Uh, Cubs, starting Luke Little, but it sounds like Ben Brown may be the more bulk guy uh, for the Cubs today. Ben Brown got a pretty lively arm, so excited to see what he can do. I think he should be able to keep uh, the Rockies' offense in check. So when he added all together, primarily, The Cubs pitching staff paired with this Rockies offense paired with the weather. I think it does lend itself towards an under. We could obviously the the Rockies pitching staff let up runs despite the fact the weather is not great for offense. I'm going to take that risk personally. So under seven and a half runs minus 122. That's the Cubs and Rockies for tonight. A place I'm looking at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's going to wrap up baseball for today. If you want some more thoughts, did talk about a couple more things for the late games, uh, liking a home run prop for the Dodgers versus the Giants game and also liking a total base prop uh, for the Padres. That game is also in the afternoon. Uh, but did did find some more value there. So if you want some more prop thoughts, uh, check out the solo shot on the FanDuel Research podcast feed. Other thing I wanted to discuss for today is Formula One. Formula One is in Japan for this week and Interesting that in Australia, we finally saw some movement here as Max Verstappen had an early issue and that allowed Carlos Sainz to win. Sainz now the only guy who has won other than Max Verstappen across the past, like I think it's 20 almost races. So Sainz broke through there and that's obviously fluke. You don't expect Verstappen to have issues very often. He actually had no retirements the entirety of last year. So that's that's a pretty volatile thing. The thing that's interesting, though, is that Ferrari had speed before Verstappen's issue across that weekend in Australia. So the question is now is, can Ferrari push for a win this weekend? And I kind of think they can. It's very clear that Ferrari is the number two team right now behind Red Bull. McLaren is a tier behind Ferrari. Then it's another tier down to Mercedes. And then everyone else is way behind those top four teams. So essentially in my eyes, at least it's four drivers fighting for the win in Red Bull and Ferrari and Sergio Perez, a Red Bull, at least by my numbers is sandwiched between Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. I'm not sure if they can beat Max straight up, but as we saw, he can have issues. It's not a 0% chance. And we don't know for sure that they can't beat him, especially given the pace they showed in Australia and the fact that it is still pretty early in the season. Looking back to Australia, obviously can't look at Verstappen's speed there, but looking at Perez, his median lap times were actually worse than Ferrari, but also worse than McLaren. So Verstappen is a clear favorite, and that's that's for obvious reasons, and it has to be the case. But Ferrari is plus 650 to win this race over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think that's kind of enticing. Uh, that's 13.3% implied odds. Max Verstappen's retirement rate projected to be probably around like 10%. So like, you know, that gets you a good chunk of the way that have to be Perez as well and the McLarens. But I think 13.3% sells them a bit short right now. I don't want to choose between Sainz and Leclerc. My model likes Sainz more, but Leclerc is obviously crazy fast and could go out there and win the poll on Saturday. So I'm going to lump them together and just take Ferrari, take the coward's way out and go with Ferrari in general. I think plus 650 is a good price. And 
when you compare it to what other sports books are offering for the Ferrari to win price, it's pretty generous. So I will take Ferrari plus 650 to win in Japan this weekend. Again, I don't know if they can do it if Verstappen is able to run the entire race, which he should. But I think that volatility is being a bit undersold with this number right now. The other spot where I'm showing value is in Zhou Guan Yu to finish inside the points. And this, this I don't know how to handle this because it's a very odd situation. If you've been watching Formula One so far this year, you've noticed that Kick Sauber, the team that Joe drives for, is having these awful pit stops where the wheel will not come off. And they've had it happen in at least at least once in all three races so far. And that sucks because if they have a 30-second pit stop, they're not going to finish in the points. They clearly have not fixed this issue yet because it happened in Australia. And I don't know if they have it fixed for this weekend. So it could go very badly. They could have another poor pit stop, in which case both Joe and Botas will be effectively banned from finishing inside the points because of how long the pit stop would take. But they've been kind of decent as far as pace goes. Joe finished 11th in Bahrain in the opener. He ran well in Saudi Arabia before he had a pit issue. He was the victim there. And again, that could happen again. And Valtteri Botas could have scored points in Australia, but he also had the pit issue there. So the speed has been fine. And they have the longest top 10 odds in the entire field. They're both 11 to 1 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Joe has been the faster driver in two out of three races. I prefer him. And the model has him well above these implied odds. But again, I have to make clear that I don't know if I've effectively modeled things given the pit stop issues. Basically, what I'm doing is you put in their projected speed and then put in a projected incident rate. I have kicked Sauber's incident rate very high, like not quite double the entire field, but I think it's pretty close to double the entire field because of those pit stop issues. If they have not resolved those issues, I could look really stupid because why would you bet on a team that you know could have a 30-second pit stop? But the speed is there, and there's always a possibility they've resolved things for this race. So I think if we're going to buy into them, now is the ideal time to do so. Again, I prefer Joe, but they could justify Botas as well at 11 to 1. I do show value there. I've got Botas around 11% to finish inside the top 10. Uh, Joe is above that, which is why I prefer him. But if you want to go Botas instead, I'm not going to fight with you too much. If you don't want to deal with this because of the pit stop issues, I don't blame you. I wouldn't bother. I think that's totally okay. But for me personally, this is where I'm going to go. So the two bets I like for Formula One this weekend in Japan, I like uh, Ferrari to win a plus 650, kind of banking on some volatility right now. And then Joe Guan Yu to finish in the points 11 to 1, potentially Botas 11 to 1 as well, if you want to go with him instead. But just again, the caveat is I have no idea if they've resolved that pit stop issue. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, we are back once again tomorrow, breaking down the final four for the men's and the women's college basketball tournaments with Dr. Ed Fang. To get that as it is posted, make sure to subscribe to Covering the Spread. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find this show on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your baseball bets across across the day. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down the final four. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.